My colleagues and I are strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2 percent goal. Today, the FOMC raised its policy interest rate by three quarters of a percentage point, and we anticipate that ongoing increases will be appropriate. We are moving our policy stance purposefully to a level that will be sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2 percent. In addition, we are continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet. Inflation remains well above our 2 percent longer run goal. The longer the current bout of, high, bout of high inflation continues, the greater the chance that expectations of higher inflation will become entrenched. We are highly attentive to the risks that high inflation poses to both sides of our mandate, and we are strongly committed to returning inflation to our 2 percent objective. And we are continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet, which plays an important role in firming the stance of monetary policy. Over coming months, we will be looking for compelling evidence that inflation is moving down, consistent with inflation returning to 2 percent. We anticipate that ongoing increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate. The pace of those increases will continue to depend on the incoming data and the evolving outlook for the economy. Restoring price stability will likely require maintaining a restrictive policy stance for some time. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. As shown in the SEP, the median projection for the appropriate level of the federal funds rate is 4.4 percent at the end of this year, one percentage point higher than projected in June. The median projection rises to 4.6 percent at the end of next year and declines to 2.9 percent by the end of 2025, still above the median estimate of its longer run value. Our overarching focus is using our tools to bring inflation back down to our 2 percent goal and to keep longer-term inflation expectations well anchored. Reducing inflation is likely to require a sustained period of below-trend growth, and there will very likely be some softening of labor market conditions. We will keep at it until we're confident the job is done. I wonder if you could give us a little detail around how you'll know when to slow down these rate increases and how you'll eventually know when to stop. We'll be looking at a few things. First, we'll want to see growth continuing to run below trend. We'll want to see movements in the labor market showing a return to a better balance between supply and demand. And ultimately, we'll want to see clear evidence that inflation is move moving back down uh, to, to 2 percent. The chances of a soft landing, landing are likely to diminish to the extent that policy needs to be more restrictive or restrictive for longer. Nonetheless, uh, we're committed to getting inflation back down to 2 percent because we think that a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain later on. FX Nation, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Now, as you heard from Jerome Powell himself, he is going to bring more pain uh, to the economy. He's going to continue to raise interest rates until we get the inflation under control. They want the inflation at 2%. It's going to be a while before we get there. Now, obviously, we, we got two more interest rate hike this year coming, and then also we're going to continue that at the beginning uh, of next year as well. We also have quantitative tightening, of course. That's basically them taking money out of the economy, as you heard uh, him say himself. So what does that look like for us when we take a look at the dollar index itself? Well, you could see we've already gone through and passed our previous mark that we had last time we talked about this, um, which is around 10, 108. Uh, so now we can start moving forward to the overall bigger target, which is 120. Now, obviously, you know, if you look at this chart, you could see clearly we're in an uptrend and we're going to continue that way until we get 
the inflation back down to where they want it, which is 2%, or at least until the, uh, the Fed pivots and starts to decrease uh, their interest rates hike. Okay, so regardless, that's going to take time uh, to do so. With that being said, guys, this is probably one of the best opportunities because we know that we're going to continue to see the dollar strength because of what's happening in the economy and what the Fed is actually doing. So how does that how can we use that? Essentially, we know that the target uh, is going to be 120. And that's essentially going back uh, to the highs of back in uh, what 01 back to the highs of 01 uh, right before uh, you know 9/11 happened essentially uh, so that's where that's where the first goal for me is is essentially going to be now if we get here very quickly and I mean like before the end of the year then we could possibly see some serious, serious movement because you know we have to go up uh very close to uh 1985 where the accord was signed to actually uh decrease the value of the dollar because it was too strong um so keep that in mind all right so but the first target right now the most important target is the 120 all right what can we do about it how can we take advantage on the other pairs let's take a quick look at nas let's take a quick look at us 30 those are going to be the simplest ones to start off with because they are both literally identical uh in how they're looking nas 100 again this is on the weekly you can clearly see we're going down to uh this level that i mentioned before uh which is around 108 uh, now, once we break this level, guys, we're just going to go back down, honestly, to where it was before uh, we had 2020 happen, okay? Um, and essentially, it's going to be somewhere in this particular range, uh, anywhere from 96, and it could be all the way down to 67, okay? So any of those two ranges uh, is where we're aiming towards, so how do we get there? We're obviously going to do a lot of cycles. And every time that we get a situation where we get an FOMC meeting, of course, and, and things of that nature, it's going to continue to do the exact same thing that it did uh, yesterday or, or the day before on Wednesday. Okay, So you could see here what happened on Wednesday, just a straight drop. And of course, we're continuing to do that. Now, also, this was the last uh, announcement from Powell. Again, he just keeps tanking the market every time he opens his mouth. Literally, every time he opens his mouth, uh, you get just a, a huge dive. Okay, just a huge dive. Now, what can we expect um, from this? Because at some point, I believe that this move has to be covered. And what I mean by that is if you look how it left a big gap wide open, okay? Take a look at the previous one. Previous one did the same thing, left a big gap, okay? What ended up happening eventually is they came back to cover the gap. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because essentially what ends up happening is when they come back to cover this gap, all they're looking for is what is the lowest low that was broken uh, in this particular move here, okay? And so what you can see is the lowest low was right here, okay? That's the lowest low that was broken from this actual move. Now, if you see, uh, essentially price action <laughs> worked its way all the way back to here, okay? Where does that tie into? It literally ties into that same low. What am I looking for? I'm looking for that same thing to happen again. Um, and so what I'm looking for is basically we have until the next, you know, uh, CPI numbers come out, monetary policy, FOMC, to basically start to climb, uh, you know, basically start to climb back up. Okay, to cover this right here. 
And then by the time we get up to this area, we'll have like another Jerome Powell announcement and then it'll tank, um, you know, it'll tank price again, basically. Okay. I think what caught a lot of people out of surprise here was the fact that they raised it, uh, you know, 75 basis points when I believe that the market was expecting 50. So they were expecting the Fed not to be as aggressive um, as with a 75 point uh, you know, basis increase. But you heard it from him. He doesn't care if we have to put more pain to get this thing down to 2%. Okay, He is literally on a mission to get this thing down to 2%, so he's going to do everything to get that down to 2%. Now, it's not going to be a soft bottom. It's going to be a fast bottom because he's going to keep increasing the interest rates over and over and over again until he sees a significant uh, decrease in the inflation. But not only that, it has to be a constant drop of inflation before he starts thinking about doing a pivot uh, to where he starts either lowering uh, the interest rates, you know, so he's not raising it as much as fast. Uh, so, but until that happens, guys, you know, you're just going to literally continue to see this stock market drop. All right. And it's going to drop no matter what we think, no matter what we say. Look for more sales. But first, of course, before selling happens, we have to get a retracement. Okay. At some point, this has to start to work its way back up and you're going to see a retracement happen. Once that retracement starts, guys, what you need to do is you simply need to put on a fib. Okay, just put on a fib from this point here, okay, to where that retracement starts. So for this previous one, if we put a fib from the very top here to when it started, you could see it literally went up to 60, uh, 618, uh, in between 618 and 786. Okay, so that's going to be around the, the same target that we're looking for again. All right, it's the same thing, guys, on US 30 because US 30 looks identical <laughs> to NAS 100. The same thing, guys. Look at US 30. Does that not look like the identical chart that we just looked at? Look at the previous move that we literally just talked about on NAS 100. Here's the move, here's the lowest point. Where did price go to? right there and then dropped same exact thing so whatever happens on nas 100 essentially us 30 will be the same thing because the stocks that are in the us 30 are also in the nas 100 so same thing once we get the start of the pullback happening and you'll know when that pullback happens guys because you're going to start to see uh these market maker orders get taken out and that's the whole point. That's all they did here, by the way, was they had market maker orders all throughout here. And then once they started to come back up, they just started taking them out, taking them out, taking them out. As soon as they got enough and they came up here, of course, they used the news of Jerome Powell to dump it all at once. Okay, that's literally all that happened, guys. If you trade NAS, if you trade US 30, just be on the lookout for the for the retracement. Okay, it's going to happen. All right. Um, and then that way we can go ahead and start to plan out the next move. So let's go ahead and take a look at the NAS 100 real quick on the other charts so we can put on our levels so we know where we're at. Essentially, as you can see, we're coming off a peak formation high. And at any time now, we can start to expect a peak formation uh, low to form. Okay. We can definitely start to, to anticipate that because we are well uh well past uh three times adr on the actual chart okay once we start to get that retracement uh literally you already know what to do because i'm telling you what to do okay just watch out for these points here these are going to be where orders are going to be sitting at and so they're going to go and grab these orders right here at least okay so just be on the lookout for that specific behavior. All right. This is not going to end. 
uh, this dropping of price is not going to end until we get the interest until we get the inflation uh, back down to where they want it to be or at least it's consistently every single month dropping dropping and i mean big drops i'm not talking about from 8.6 to 8.3 they want to see some major drops happen and until they start to see that consistently happen they're not going to pivot what's going to what does this mean for for you guys that are in the stock market let's say and you know you guys that are investors and things of that nature well pretty simple is this is gonna, probably going to be the best opportunity for you invest investors to get your your shares of stock at a ridiculously huge discount that's what that means okay so i mean so far off the top so we've already dropped about 19 percent okay we're looking for like another 15 percent drop which will probably bring us somewhere around this range right here basically right before march of 2020 all of this all of this right here guys was all due to the money printing machine that's it that's all that was this has to come back and normalize and erase all the gains that we had from 2020 back down to reality the only good part about this guys is that you're going to be able to get some really good prices okay on stocks that you can load up on that you'll be able to do so take advantage of that of this particular opportunity because you're not going to get very many opportunities where literally we know what's going to happen the nas 100 look at this nas 100 has dropped 35 percent already and it's not done yet we're looking for another 15 that's going to be about about 45 percent drop guys in the nas 100. when was the last time you had a 45 percent drop in the nas 100 look at the chart and you tell me when was the last time you had a 45 percent drop you'd have to go back to the uh to the 2008 crash right where it crashed about 60 percent or so you'd have to go back down that far to 2008 and you could see we crashed about 55 percent guys that's the last major crash this is going to be the second one 2020 was nothing this is going to be bigger it's going to be about 44 percent drop or so it's going to happen on this but just watch the dollar index that's going to be your biggest friend if you're trading usd pairs watch until we get to this 120 area because if we get to this 120 area too fast man i feel really bad because we ain't got nothing nothing there is no structure here at all to stop price action so keep that in mind the only reason by the way that this actually happened this right here do you know why this happened is because there was an accord that was signed uh the g nations to decrease the value of the dollar on purpose okay so go read it up a 1985 dollar accord uh, the accord that was signed in 1985 and why okay you'll see what i'm talking about but this was done on purpose right. guys if you found this video helpful give me a like on the on the uh, video guys subscribe to the channel um, and if you want to be part of the next mentoring class guys it starts in like literally three days uh, so everything's going to be in the link in the description and uh, guys enjoy the weekend have a good one Guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce on this channel, if you find value in that content, please consider jo uh, joining us in our next FXN Masterclass. You can see the date uh, that our next class will be held. All of the information is linked below in the description of this video. We hope to see you in the next Masterclass so we can help you reach all of your trading goals, guys. Have a great rest of your day.